Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through the five things I wish I knew before I bought my property. So if you like this video, please do give it a like, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment down below. I follow us on Instagram, which is at double dose of chi and share this video with anybody who might find it helpful. For those who may not know, I just bought my property and it's a four bed property in Essex. It's like the London Borough of Havering, but it's really Essex. Um, and I just wanted to take you through the five things that I wish I knew before I bought that property. Number one, the process can take so much longer than expected, especially if you're part of a chain and especially if it's over the Christmas period. So what is a chain? A chain is essentially where in order for you to complete your sale, the sellers also have to complete a sale. So in my... Uh, process I had to complete the sale the sellers of that property also had to complete a sale and those sellers also had to complete a sale so as a result the process was so much longer than expected and I just really didn't anticipate that it was going to take the length of time that it did I thought it would be you know two to three months and it ended up being about four to four and a half months because of all of those different chains and really do try and avoid the Christmas period I mean it basically added like three weeks um, to the whole process. Everybody kind of wants to wind down for Christmas. They're not really concerned with anything that's happened before. And it just meant that it just took a lot longer as a result because it was over the Christmas period. Number two, solicitors can really make or break your process. So in my <laughs> instance, the seller solicitors needed a lot more prodding, a lot more pushing. You had to like call them every couple of days. The agent had to be basically on their case consistently. And it just meant that the process was so much longer than we had originally anticipated. My solicitor was very much on the ball from the like start. But I think once the sound duty um, holiday got extended, I think he just got a little bit tired. And so it then meant that I had to like consistently push the process, speak to the agent and just make sure that I was moving the process along so that completion could take place as soon as possible so just be mindful of that when it is that you are picking solicitors and also just like if the process has taken a lot longer than expected your solicitors might just feel a little bit tired and a little bit burnt out i would take take um from that you know anything uh considering that i was paying them but anyway we move number three make sure you read everything where you are entering into a property it was like it's likely to cost you like thousands if not hundreds of thousands of pounds so you just want to make sure that you understand everything that you're entering into and if you don't speak to somebody you are paying people to be able to provide you with that knowledge and provide you with that intel and so for me we got our searches back on the 29th of january i got i got my report and title on the 3rd of february and i read through all of the different documents on the data room the report and title front to back and as i was reading i was making notes thinking about questions and I got my sister on the phone for about 45 to one hour, 45 minutes to an hour to discuss all of my questions and so I didn't sign any documentation I didn't do anything until I had made sure that I understood everything that was in that documentation pack and do ask it doesn't matter how stupid you think it is it's better that you ask the question you're comfortable with the situation before you're entering into a contract which would put you on the hook for a couple of years at, at a minimum and like you're you know taking on so much debt you just want to make sure that you're comfortable with everything you're signing up to number four try and befriend the sellers so i was really lucky the sellers of the property that i bought were lovely they were this adorable like elderly couple really sweet individuals there and um, they were downsizing their um their kids had moved out about like, 20 years ago and they had done a lot of conversion and because there's only two of them they didn't really need like three floors and so they then decided that they were just going to move like basically around the corner um, and buy like a bungalow and they were elderly so they just didn't want to be moving up and down the stairs all the time but they were like the loveliest couple they left me their washing machine their um, dishwasher they left me some furniture they also left me like a bed which hadn't been used because there's only two of them and um there was a bed in both uh the second room and also in the loft conversion and uh, it just meant that the whole process was a lot more smooth and even now i can message them and ask them questions about the house that i perhaps may not have known if i hadn't befriended the sellers obviously i know that this isn't always the case and it's not always an option to be able to befriend the sellers but to the extent you can definitely make it as enjoyable a process as possible and the fact that you know they like you and you like them will make it so much easier and um, 
I like can't thank them enough for like reducing my costs and making it so much smoother and so much more smooth for me to go through the process. So if you can, befriend your sellers. Number five, and I think that this is like kind of what people talk about, but not if you know what I mean. So that's like factoring costs for furnishing and your first mortgage payment. So um, a lot of people talk about, you know, the additional costs that relate to um, buying a property. And if you're not following uh, the ultimate guide group, I'm going to do a full post on each of the different costs that I had to put together for the actual purchase of the property. So I had factored in things like my solicitor's fees, the valuation fees, the arrangement fees, um, what else was there? The mortgage broker fees. Those are all the kind of things that kind of make sense in respect to the property itself. I wasn't gonna like, I was only moving 30 minutes away from my parents' house. So I didn't really need a moving van. Um, we we're also planning on renovating the property that we, I was planning on renovating the property. So I wasn't gonna move in automatically. It would be like a gradual process before I properly moved in. So there wasn't like those moving costs that most people have if they're moving to a new city or a new, a new country um, or moving a lot further away from where they were previously living but for me um i suppose what was uh something i hadn't really like put into my budget and um, at the beginning of buying my property was actually like buying all the things that make up a home so like a sofa a bed a mattress like kettles toasters cutlery um garden furniture dining tables all of that kind of stuff that like obviously make a house a home um and i kind of like factored in my renovation costs but within the renovation costs i also need to think about the furnishings as well and also your first mortgage payment for the most part is going to be a bit more than your actual monthly mortgage payments so for me my mortgage payments um my first monthly my first mortgage payment is about a grand more than my actual mortgage payments um like every month and so for me that was something i like when i saw the mortgage offer come in i was like okay cool let me just make sure that i put that into my budget and now i have the money for it but it's something that i hadn't really like thought about or realized that you would have to similar to like you know, i suppose when you go and rent a, a property that you will have to go and put a bit more money for the first mortgage payment so anyway, these are my five things of um, all of the things I wish I'd known before I started like the process and buying my property. Um, obviously it worked out fine and let me know in the comments below if you want me to take you on like a house tour and like a video to explain the plans for the reno and um, like the whole renovation process and then like a, a house tour once it's all done. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel, like, comment, share with anybody who might find this useful and let me know if there are any tips that you wish you you had known before you started buying property or any things that you found really useful in this thanks so much and i'll see you guys later bye